Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. On behalf of our, of our leader and uh, our PC caucus, I'm delighted to uh, pay tribute today to a man who was a true blue-collar hero to Welland and Thorold, and quite frankly, a legendary figure in this assembly, known for his wit, style, and above all, his blunt integrity. Peter Cormos's star burned bright, and he earned the respect and admiration of everyone who had the good fortune to know him, including people like me who are in different political parties. Most importantly, he earned the respect and admiration of the average person he represented, as a lawyer or as an elected official. His constituents knew he would fight for them without hesitation or reservation, and there could be no higher compliment given than that earned respect. While Peter was flamboyant and always stood out in a crowd, he never forgot his roots and had no patience for what he termed horse feathers. <laughs> Peter didn't use the term horse feathers because he was being polite. As someone well-versed in parliamentary procedures and rules, he knew he could be kicked out for using unparliamentary language. Peter, being who he was, just couldn't resist pushing the envelope, so he found clever euphemisms and turns of phrases to torment every speaker. <laughs> Everyone clearly knew what Peter was saying, but no speaker could reference existing rulings or make new ones up fast enough to tie up Peter's cutting tongue. Peter entered the provincial legislature in 1988, two years before I also began my role as an MPP. And one of the reasons I credit for my own longevity in this job is that I was fortunate not to find myself ever in Peter's crosshairs. <laughs> this was a man that wasn't afraid to fire shots at absolutely anyone and everyone. When insurance company executives appeared at a legislative committee during the Peterson government's uh, time in office, they were introducing legislation that would increase insurance rates. Peter earned a reprimand from his own party leader for calling them whores and slime. Yes, Mr. Speaker, there was a time when reading Hansard topped any reality show for shock and entertainment value. Peter was single-handedly responsible for the highest viewership of the Legislative <laughs> Assembly television channel. In protest of Premier Peterson's insurance legislation, he filibustered for 37 hours, at one time speaking for 17 hours non-stop. Thousands of Ontario residents tuned in to watch this marathon feat. He had set up telephone lines to take in viewers' concerns and comments, which he used to keep on talking. <laughs> More than 500 people called into those lines, one of which was even staffed by then NDP leader Bob Ray. <laughs> Mischievously, Peter also provided coloring books for government Liberal MPPs during the middle of the night when he saw they were getting a bit restless. <laughs> I can't even imagine how much fun Peter would be having if he were still in the legislature today. <laughs> it was such a delight for me to see Peter in action in this legislature. He had such an intellect, and he would mesmerize everyone just about every time he stood up to speak. It was in Peter's nature to deflate arrogance, inflict discomfort on the comfortable, and comfort those in need or in trouble. Even at an early age, Mr. Speaker, there's a track record of challenging authority without reservation and often with humour. He was never afraid to get into a bit of trouble and would pay the price without complaint. As a practicing lawyer, he used to regularly park in the judge's reserved parking spot, often getting his sports car towed away. He obviously thought the sight of the judge having to fish out coins for a parking meter was worth the cost of the tow. <laughs> As both an alderman and local lawyer before he entered provincial politics, Peter was well known for being scrappy and combative. Just before winning his first provincial election, he was cited for contempt of court on the grounds that he was insolent and grandstanding. <laughs> I understand the citation was dropped just days before voting day. Personally, I, personally, I suspect everyone at court just wanted them to go to Queen's Park so we wouldn't be in their faces on a daily basis. In fact, there is a rumour that the lawyers whose arguments he would rip apart in court actually took up a collection to ensure his campaign had enough money for him to succeed to his election to Queen's Park. Peter never forgot his roots and remained a maverick even when he was in the government caucus under Bob Ray. In the early days of the Ray government, 
there was a ridiculous amount of controversy over a photo that was taken of Peter. He appeared as the Sunshine Boy in the Toronto Sun. He was fully and conservatively dressed, wearing a white shirt, dark pants, and a tie. In fact, he was probably more dressed up than was his usual habit here in the Ontario Legislature of cowboy boots and no tie. For some reason, this photo generated more anguish in the government at the time than any of the shenanigans of today. Cabinet colleagues of Peter were critical, and Bob Ray ultimately removed him from Cabinet. Different times indeed, Mr. Speaker. Personally, I was just jealous of Peter. No newspaper has ever asked me to pose for a glamour <laughs> shot. <laughs> he will always be too excited over there. Ah, he will always be fondly remembered and greatly missed. Many of the newer MPPs in this assembly never had the privilege of seeing Peter in action. There have been few MPPs like Peter that could command the attention of everyone each time he rose to speak. He had relentless drive and energy, never mincing words. Peter never hesitated to call horse feathers in this assembly and express himself fully. When I think of Peter, I often remember how he would take every opportunity to reprimand the government for limiting debate through time allocation and closure motions. And I know many of us fondly remember, remember him yelling his famous line on these occasions, the Liberals don't want to work with him. <laughs> I know he would be saying that regularly if he was still with us today. <laughs> so as in every debate that Peter participated in, once again today, Peter gets the final word. Here, here.